first thing I was thinking about randomly today, you know, I was thinking about that kind of came through my head or burst through the other side of my head, burst through my flipping eardrums. You know, what I was thinking about, bitch, you guessed it, Black Lives Matter. I think Black Lives Matter for me was an inflection point because that is when I realized more so than ever that I was not like other girls. You know that whole pick me saying, not like the other girls, right? I realized I was not like the other girls when Black Lives Matter was a thing because I wasn't even that politically um, active. I wasn't that politically knowledgeable. I wasn't that societally active or knowledgeable in any way, shape or form. I was just kind of doing my own thing. But even I could smell the scam. Even I could smell the grift. Even I could smell the nonsense from a mile away. I honestly could. And even though Black Lives Matter was more so an African-American thing that kind of you know spread worldwide, I still saw that this was this wasn't done for the best of intentions. It was definitely done to line somebody's pockets by, you know, um, um, what you call it, flying the flag of victimhood. And when everybody was banding around it, using the Black Lives Matter hashtag, using the BLM hashtag, doing the whole black squares nonsense, you remember that? Blackout Tuesday, do you fucking remember that shit? I knew... I knew that I was different because I never, ever agreed with this shit. I thought this stuff was absolutely nonsense. If anything, the thing that annoyed me the most about it is that I thought to myself, this isn't going to create the change that they say they want. Because in my head, I was thinking to myself, I've watched so many horrible, distressing, really sad police um, incompetence, police brutality, um, police basically murder videos that I know now for the amount of videos that I've watched, it's not just a racism thing. It's just an institutional thing. Like the police force, especially around the world, if there's a video going around at the moment of a police um, officers in Spain, you know, beating the living shits out of some African dude on the street, but it happens to everybody. Police around the world are fucking awful for the most part, especially in places in Western Europe. So I always thought having a message being put behind like a very racially charged slogan like Black Lives Matter wouldn't get the job done because to get the job done you need to make sure that everybody's aware that police brutality and police incompetence police murder um police just like not able to do their job properly and not be able to handle humans in the right way is something that affects everybody across the board we all have a situation or we could all can recall a moment with our family and friends where they've suffered of the hands of you know very overzealous police security guard whatever it may be People didn't want to hear that, right? They just want to hear the whole victimhood complex. They want to band around the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Nonsense. Obviously, the term itself then got co-opted. It made other people mad. It, it then started the White Lives Matter trend as well. That became a thing. And it just completely devalued and took it away. And then, of course, later on, we found out that the founders or the people that originally set up the Black Lives Matter charity over there in, Amer um, Af in, in America, sorry, these African-American people, ended up just taking all the money for themselves or taking a majority of the money for themselves and buying themselves lavish things like houses and cars and all this fucking malarkey absolutely insane but i think as outside of this because this is a picture on the screen now of a pair of nike air jordan ones with the strap on it that says uh, black lives matter i think it's nike air jordan ones i'm not too sure if they're jordan ones if they're airships but whatever sh or maybe they're vandals whatever shoe they are they've got like a strap on the top i think they should be air force ones i think so I, I wish i knew my knowledge of fucking shoes from down below but anyway they're a black type pair of jordans this person's wearing and allegedly did this person's um a member of Jordan brand, I forgot his name, something Cook. He's like an energy marketing guy over there. So clearly these are the things that, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate they never released these things. It was just something that he probably did for himself behind the scenes, just to kind of rock whatever it may be. But this wasn't the worst. The worst definitely was a Blackout Tuesday thing. Because I remember during Blackout Tuesday where everyone had to kind of put these dumb squares on their fucking profile to show that they, you know, weren't racist. I legitimately remember this time I received DMs I receive DMs from friends, friends that I care about, friends that I rate, people that I know, people that I like, people who are reasonable, D in distress, asking me, hey, Agostino, what do you think about this Blackout Tuesday thing, man? I'm worried if I don't put it up, people, like, actually, what, like, actually, obviously, messaging me because I'm fucking black, number one, but still messaging me out of, like, pure concern, like, hey, if I don't do this thing, Will you look at me differently? Will I be looked at differently? Would I, would I be on the wrong side of history? Am I going to be looked at as fucking Stalin if I don't put this square on my profile? Blah, blah, blah. What's it like? I was like, oh my God, this shit has broken our brains. When reasonable people who have, had deemed to be reasonable, people who had deemed to be rational, people who had deemed to be balanced are very much worried that if they don't put a stupid black square on their Instagram profile, somehow people are going to think they're fucking Adolf Hitler. Absolutely insane. 
And we all lived through that. It was absolutely crazy, but we lived through it. And I, and I, like I said before in the beginning, I legitimately think this was the moment where I realized I wasn't like other girls. But then I also realized I wasn't really on the whole grifter wind up merchant thing because I wasn't exactly screaming it at the rooftops that, oh, you are all idiots. How are you doing this shit? This is a dumb thing. I just kind of kept it to myself and kept it moving. But at the time, I never took part in it, in anything, whether it came to the Black Lives Matter hashtag thing, whether it came to the fucking black squares, whether it came to the clapping on the outside for the fucking NHS. I didn't partake in any of that nonsense. I thought it was all gay. I thought it was all lame. I thought it was all fucking stupid. I thought it all wasn't going to do anything for anything that they thought it was going to do for. And if anything, it will all just kind of, if anything, um, capitalize on our collective fear. We were all worried for the future. We all didn't know whether or not the world was going to reopen again. If it was going to reopen, was it going to be the same world that we left in 2019? And we were all kind of in a bit of a weird place. And all this shit was meant to kind of comfort us. It didn't comfort me. If anything, it made me realise that, you know, there's a lot of people out there that love being victims. There's a lot of people out there that without racism, you know, without institutional racism, without white supremacy, they don't really have anything to say. They don't really have anything to contribute. All they contribute on is the fear is the lack of cooperation, is a lack of unity, is lack of love amongst people. That, that's what they actually want. They actually want us to be more divided so that we don't come together, so that we don't rid ourselves from the scourge of racism, the scourge of xenophobia, the scourge of whatever else, homophobia, whatever else it may be in this world to discriminate and to kind of isolate and kind of keep us separate. Because one thing that we realized during COVID, ironically enough, one thing we realized during COVID and during lockdown is that we're more different than we're alike the majority of us obviously the one top one percenters out there they were able to continue their lives without any real interruption you listen to joe rogan today joe rogan had um andrew schultz on and he was talking about how he set up the comedy mothership and essentially the comedy mothership came as the, from what he said off the back of frustration with la because he felt like his career in stand-up was being stifled because la was one of the strictest states out there or california was one of the strictest states out there in not allowing people to you know open up hospitality you know in hospitality air venues weren't allowed to open up bars and clubs and whatever weren't allowed to operate as per normal and i think that um joe rogan said in that podcast that even um california even got to a point where they were stopping people from doing outdoor shows because outdoor shows are the way to get around some of the whole um lockdown measures and stuff but even outdoor shows were being you know ruled out so joe rogan had the funds or had the means to basically move his family to another state in texas and then try and open a comedy club out there because the rules and regulations and restrictions there were far looser and far more relaxed than they were in california then he sets up the comedy mothership it opens and then he sets out for it to become the best comedy club in the world and obviously with his name and notoriety and the way he's kind of you know done things it's probably on his way to being there but he was able to do that because he's in the top 1%. He's got fucking money. He's got more money than he could probably spend in a lifetime. So he could kind of do that. But the majority of us couldn't. We didn't have the ability to just kind of like decide that we didn't want to partake in the world and what it was going on. We just wanted to do our own thing. We couldn't. We had to wait for, you know, restrictions to be loosened. We had to wait to get vaccinated. We had to wait to get a stamp, a card, whatever maybe. We couldn't just do things we wanted to. So we realized we were more alike than we weren't. But the powers that be probably saw that I thought you know what we can't have these people realizing there's more they have more in common and they're different we have to kind of ramp up the fucking hostility rank up the segregation rank up the fucking differences and all that shit and that's where we are in situation now so if anything all of these initiatives as uh, even though they try to purport to be you know helping minorities and helping people if anything what they did is they they, they went on to sow more division Black Lives Matter, Blackout Tuesday, all that shit went, went on to sow more division because if you weren't for this, if you didn't agree to it, suddenly you were a racist. Suddenly you weren't an ally. Suddenly you were anti-black. Like, come on, bro. Come on, because you didn't want to put a hashtag at the end of your tweet. Because you didn't want to put a black square on, a lame black square on your fucking feed. Do me a favor, have a little jog, and sayonara, saya bloody nara.